Okay, so I've done two of these discussion videos before, one on the release of Tenet during the peak of the pandemic, and one on the Memoria tour earlier this year. These were meant to be side conversations that didn't fit into any video, but reflected thoughts I had on the film world in general. And you know, I feel like they did a decent job at being that, while also being relatively light and digestible. Neither really needed a content warning. Yeah, that's gonna change this time! This may legitimately be the darkest these discussion videos ever get. I'm not kidding. This is bad. So, content warning for sexual assault, groping, incest, incestual sexual assault, and misogyny, including trans misogyny. Yes, it really is that bad. This week, the film Amsterdam will be released to the public. A pretty large award season favorite consisting of huge stars like Christian Bale, Margot Robbie, Anya Taylor-Joy, John David Washington, Robert De Niro, Rami Malek, Mike Myers, Chris Rock, Michael Shannon, and Taylor Swift, and directed by perennial award-winning director David O. Russell. If you don't know David O. Russell by name, you probably know his films if you pay attention to the award circuit. I Heart Huckabees, The Fighter, Silver Linings Playbook, American Hustle, and Joy. And through these films, Russell, yes the O is not part of his last name, it's his middle initial, I always assumed otherwise too, has become a Hollywood in general awards darling known for bringing acting tour de forces out of his performers and regularly getting these massive ensemble pieces to work with him. Which makes his history with controversy all the more uncomfortable because he's not a light controversial history. You may have heard of him headbutting George Clooney on the set of Three Kings or apparently assaulting Christopher Nolan at a party, which sounds like something I made up. Or you may be familiar with Russell's habit of cruelly berating and verbally abusing some of his female stars, particularly Lily Tomlin on I Heart Huckabees and Amy Adams on American Hustle. But all of this pales in comparison to the story at the center of this discussion, the reason I'm making this video. In December 2011, Russell's 19-year-old trans niece, Nicole Pelliquin, filed a police report that Russell had sexually assaulted her, groping her and hovering his hands over her genitals. Again, she was 19, and Russell was not only her authority figure as her uncle, but it also helped her with her trans health care. Russell would admit to the assault, but claimed that she was attempting to seduce him, and she told him to grope her. I hope I don't need to say that that has been a common refrain from abusers for decades, and while we can't be certain, Russell's behavior suggests that this was quite possibly more than likely not the case. Sadly, the case ended up being dropped because there had been no witnesses to the assault, despite Russell's argument that he had done it. But ignoring any speculation about motive, the assault did confirmably happen. It was confirmed by himself, Peliquin, and police reports. Despite that, and the fact that it happened over a decade ago, this seemingly barely reached the surface of people's minds until the release of this film, with press from the time seeming rarer than the ones that bring the incident back to the surface today. Which means that the last decade of his filmmaking was done with this being a known fact. He got to make four more films and received four Academy Award nominations. And let's be clear, people in the industry knew. Even if for many of us, the story rarely popped up and we maybe were unaware of it. I mean, for fuck's sake, this was even mentioned in the Sony Pictures leak from 2014! This was known, and he was allowed to do this. So now, Amsterdam will come out an instant Oscar buzz piece filled with that ensemble cast full of huge stars and starring arguably the biggest musician in the world in Taylor Swift and being produced by the other biggest musician in the world in Drake. But finally with this film, people are starting to find out about this. 
So what can we do about it? Well, if you ask me, there are two ways to proceed, both of which I think are necessary for myself. The first is to not support the film financially in any way. At least, that's my choice. I'm not going to see it in a theater, I'm not going to purchase it, I'm not going to give Russell any money. And I get for some of you who may have just heard of this incident, this may be a big ask. There's a lot of big performers in this film that people want to support. Taylor Swift, Anya Taylor-Joy, Margot Robbie all have devoted fan bases who want to see them succeed. And I guess for some, that might make them feel that they need to support the film, otherwise these performers may get lost in the dust. But there will be other opportunities to lift them up. The person who will be most empowered by all of this will be an abuser. The second is to openly make it so discussion of this movie cannot be had without mentioning what happened. Make this film and David O. Russell tied permanently to the incident like we did with Brian Singer and Bohemian Rhapsody with Singer's allegations of sexual abuse. This is fully obtainable through reviews and discussion on Twitter. All this bad press can just come from discussing it. In the same way that Cosby and Singer were taken down by these discussions, so too can Russell. Start any discussion in the film with the allegations against him. If you work for an organization covering the film, make sure it doesn't go unmentioned. We need to make this the centerpiece of all discussions about the film. Make this the biggest PR disaster of the year. Even bigger than the Don't Worry Darling and Blonde press tours, which I get is a high mark, but this is pretty important. Because that's the thing. We need to force this conversation. It's been several years since Me Too, and it's clear that Hollywood has not fixed anything. It has only plugged the holes that people know about while the system inside remains rotten. And like many, I didn't know about this story until recently. It seems it got buried for a lot of people. But it happened, and people in power did know, and they kept giving him money. So we need to be said who knew about this, who has aided him throughout the years, and who was unaware and just along for the ride. Because it's one thing to be a hothead, it's another thing to be a completely irresponsible cruel director, but I think I speak for everyone when I say assaulting your own niece is so monstrous it should bar you from the industry for good. So we don't know how much anyone knew. We don't know if the cast would walk away condemning the man if they knew, or if some of them knew and joined on regardless. But it's a conversation we need to force because we can't just let this behavior go on. Because if we don't have this conversation, then we are all complicit in keeping an abuser in a place of power. So when you go to the theaters next week, keep all of this in mind. And remember who David O. Russell really is.